Welcome back to Crossplay, our video game podcast here at the Whatnots. Today is Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. This is number 127 of our show. And coming up on today's show, PlayStation has announced a controller for your iPhone. Details about GTA 6 have leaked and the Sims 4 accidentally added incest. What is going on? Man, I, video games are weird. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Ignacio Rojas. Hey. How's it bad. going, Ignacio? Doing good. Doing better. <laughs> yeah, I'm you back. had COVID this past week. Yeah. So um, hadn't happened. It's been, uh, what, two years, two years and a half. Hadn't happened. Had to happen at some point. Yeah. Who would have thought that going on a trip to a place that has a lot of COVID cases right now Especially wasn't Florida. a good idea to keep away from COVID. <laughs> Especially Florida. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I went to Miami. Yeah, but I think that I got it on the plane. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, yeah, it's, it's at least good you made it back home where you could like be in your own place and yeah. like be taken care of and not be stuck. That would suck. But yeah, um, I actually tested negative when I when I got back. I, uh, the mm. same day I got tested, got negative, but then uh, calf, the the coughing started coming, the right nose started coming, and I thought, uh, I better be sure. Yeah, and then, that's yeah, smart. Tested positive. That's smart. Well, we're happy to have you back here on the show. Uh, my week, uh, thankfully, I I did not have COVID. I still have not yeah. gotten. COVID. Oh. Uh, well, Lucky. there, there, there was once I possibly could have had it, but the, the, I was also around other people that did not have it, and uh, I, I did not spread it to anyone else. But that was right when I moved out here, so that was like back in March. But knock on wood, I don't get it. Yeah, but we shall see. Take care. I'm, I'm sure good. I'm sure one day. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, video games. We got some video games, video games to ta- talk about. Kyle, uh, what, what games have you been playing? Uh, to, to, to be honest, I haven't been playing much, but l- let me uh, go ahead and do the what we've been playing jingle. Right, so yeah, I forgot that we had a jingle for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I talked about last week, uh, beating Stray and starting Live Alive. Uh, that's the, the game that I'm on right now. Unfortunately, have not gotten to play it this week, so I'm not farther than I was last week. So if you want to go hear my thoughts on Live Alive, go check out our podcast from last week. Uh, I actually tried it out for a bit. I yeah. played a bit of the demo, uh, mm-hmm. played uh, a bit of uh, the feudal japan uh okay what do you call it mission setting i think that's the one that i'm starting out next that's the one that i like started it it looks fun the only thing that i do not completely get is the combat the combat is a bit weird where it where it kind of mixes if you played the original final fantasy 7 it kind of adds in the I, what's it called the active uh something that, like something. weight bar you just like yeah it, where it you have a, a progress bar people do where actions, you, instead yeah. of it being actual turns you have a progress bar that fills up and once it's filled then you can act and so you have that then uh when that bar is filled you can either move or attack but sometimes you cannot move but sometimes you can and sometimes well you can it feels very fast and well, and it's your character's turn. You can move as much as you want for as long as you want. But the weight bars of other characters are also filling up at the same time. So, yeah, yeah. But sometimes you could just be moving around and it'll there might be a status effect that you know. have on. I, I, I'm not sure uh, you got hit with something, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's it's this yeah. mix of like. Yeah, that weight bar stuff and then like a strategy game. Yeah. Just like with like a grid based st- strategy t- 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 tactics game there. Uh, it's it's interesting combat. It's not super difficult. Um, 
but it, it's neat just because because there's seven characters you can pick from uh and they're all just like two to three hour stories so they're just these little bite-sized chunk ch- chunks which is neat yeah neat fun. good stuff so uh so you've tried that what else have you been playing well, speaking of uh, grid-based combat strategy RPG, I, of course, started Digimon Survive. The game finally came out. Of course you did. I have not played it that much. I have to be honest. I've only played about an hour. And uh, yeah, the game sure is uh, an interactive... Uh, ah, what do you call it? Like a visual novel? Visual novel, that's the word, yeah. Yeah. It definitely is a visual novel. On the in the hour that I've played, I've only fought once, which was a tutorial at the beginning of the game. Okay. And haven't fought that much. And the rest of it is your typical hey, we are teenagers at high school or middle school or whatever, and it's a pretty regular life until you getting you encounter Digimon. Interesting. And so uh the I'm not a visual novel guy. I don't think I've ever played, actually played a visual novel game. But since it's Digimon, the combat looks fun. I, of course, I'm going to play through it. But I feel like I, I have to be in the mood of actually playing it because there is a lot it's of a lot more reading. reading. Yeah. Reading. Okay. I read the paragraph. Click. Read the next paragraph. <laughs> click. Next. Read the next paragraph. Click. And and so on. So I definitely have to be in the mood of doing that. The way that I try to come at it is thinking of it more like I'm watching a new season. Mm, yeah. uh, one, of, one of the things that I liked oh, about the game is that stuff. towards the beginning, it shows you a cinematic, which is pretty much just uh if it if it were the anime a new anime it is a cinematic hand drawn all that yeah in the same style and and after that i was like okay i should see this as i'm watching a new season that i occasionally i get to play sometimes so i'm kind of going to it um uh, in that way uh i'm interested to see the kind of like the philosophy or the approach this game has to Digimon. Every season has a different take, whether it is more of the fantasy, it's a different world vibe, or if it right. is, it's more sci-fi and they are actual programs and whatnot. And I know that this one takes the more the Digimon Ghost game approach where they are kind of more like spirits in a way. That That's how like humans interact with them, where they... If you hear stories about the yokai and the demons and the right. gods of the, of Japan, it's more kind of like that way how they interpret Digimon. And so I'm intrigued to see how that plays out more. Okay. Well, good stuff. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was sh- sh- showing the trailer uh, while you were talking about it. Look, looks like there's some scary, like, paranormal stuff happening yeah. uh, in there, too. I mean, I guess Yeah, not it starts out with you going to a like shrine a in the middle visual. of the forest. Level. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. There, 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 there you go. That is good stuff. Um, I think that's all we've been playing. I've this had week. more. If you want me to say more, is is there something you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, I have two things that I can go talk about. It. One, one real quick. Uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse. I'm still going through it. Uh, last time that I was here, I complained how. I started again, wanted to play the DLC, and I couldn't because I didn't have the level. Turns out that by finishing the game, even though I'm 30 levels below the recommended level, I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine to take, <laughs> to take on the DLC somehow. Uh, so I've been going through that. I have, I think, three DLCs. I've gone through one and a half. And like I said before, I love what they've done with the game, where they took this kind of like separate idea of a story of Dragon Ball with the new timelines and, and the demon realm and whatnot. And, Shit. Getting and phone I, calls. Mr. Popular yeah. over here. <laughs> I thought I had it in silence. 
I just love that. Uh, love the the love that they put into the DLC. They have a good amount of cin- of um, cutscenes, cool. very cinematic cutscenes. Uh, not hand drawn, but a uh, very good CG for uh, for for the game. So I love that. So many years into the game, they still are putting all this work and effort into the game. Cool, good stuff, good stuff. And then the other game that I've been playing quite a lot. To be honest, and I never saw myself playing this much of the game. It's an old crossplay classic, uh, an old Geno classic, Genshin Impact. Interesting. I was gonna, I was about to say like, oh no, are you our new Final Fantasy fourteen? No, 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 guy. <laughs> Cal, Cal, come on! I'm not a dork. Come on, I have yeah. higher standards. Yeah, uh, but okay. no, I've been playing. I've been playing a lot of Genshin Impact lately. I my story with the game is that I tried it out when it came out. It was very close to Zelda, but it's kind of like the Uncanny Valley where it is so close that it isn't. So I'm uh, I, I'm not vibing with it. Uh, I've been trying to give it uh, more chances throughout the years. I have a friend that is very into Genshin Impact. A friend who cool. doesn't really play that many games, to be honest, is very into Genshin Impact. So I thought. And this was before me going to Miami. I was in, the, in this weird place where I didn't want to start anything new because I was going to be a week out without any consoles on my PC. Sure. And I didn't want anything new. I didn't want any long commitments. And uh, for, for a while, I've been wanting to give Genshin another try. So I gave it a try. Did, did you try it on your phone? Is, is that how you... That, okay, that, that's the thing. I started on, on PC. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and again, I love. I have an ultra wide console, uh, an ultra wide monitor for my PC, so that it instantly makes everything better. Mm-hmm. Um, and he says he isn't a dork. Kyle, <laughs> trust me. Ultra wide <laughs> makes it makes open world <laughs> games specifically uh, way better. Uh, so I I started it on my PC. I went to my flight, and it turns out that I, of course, I couldn't bring my console. Got to bring my PC. I had my Switch. I had an, an iPad, and one of the good things about Genshin Impact is that there are a lot of ways to play the game, whether yeah. it be on your phone, on your iPad, on a PC. Um, and so, yeah, on my flight, I just I had my iPad. I brought with me a DualShock 4, and I played a bunch of it. That's cool. Um, had some weird connection problems where sometimes I would try and try, and the game wouldn't connect for, for whatever reason, but... Still, it got it got its hooks on me, and one I think one reason that it has done that is that the more that you play it, the more things that that you get to do, or you unlock more things to do. Where before, when I was playing, I I I saw it just as okay. There are missions that I can do. It's an open world. I can unlock new waypoints and whatever. Mm-hmm. But then as you go. You unlock at a certain point. You unlock daily missions, where you get four daily missions. You get you do those. You get a lot of experience. Then at some point, and I didn't know that the game had this. You unlock the the option of a game pass, or, or not a game uh, battle pass. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. A battle pass, and I had no idea that the game had a battle pass. But okay. uh, at some point, you get to a certain level, you get the ability of getting a uh, battle pass. So that. Mixed with the uh, with now the the daily missions and the grind to get uh, to get better and and better my characters and find the new, the find new places in this world. I just got into it. So you're telling me that next week you're gonna be living in a cardboard box right next to Gino. Ah, uh, who knows, man? Since he who spent knows, all uh, his uh, money on yeah, the game the impact thing. back in the day. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. Man. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I, I do not rule that out. <laughs> but yeah, so Good I've been stuff. playing that a lot. Good stuff. And the only other thing that I have is I finally beat Kirby. Kirby ah. on the Forgotten Land. I don't know. You beat it also, yes. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That wild ending, ending huh? <laughs> well, I was expecting a wilder ending from, from the way that people have been talking about how wild it is. But it, it does get wild. Yeah. It does take a turn. <laughs> 
just not what you expect from yeah like like yes this was my first kirby game so i didn't really know what to expect but apparently that's a thing right it's like oh it's cute it's kirby but the end is like you fight god and 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 then that's it so like there there was some of like okay this is just a kirby game but yeah, I, I think this one in particular hit with a wider audience that hadn't really played them in yeah. a long time or at at all and was just like, whoa, this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. So Yeah, and also if you've seen any any gameplay of the game, you will you know that the game has this post apocalyptic vibe. Mm-hmm. But for most of the game, it, it's just there. It is okay yeah. a setting. A setting that you go through. But then you get towards the ending, and then you start to know, oh, that's what happened. That's why <laughs> yeah. there is supposed to be a clip. That's why there are no people here, and that's the motivation of the, of the bosses at the end. Huh. And then by the end, you get a, wild. a clear homage, homage to yep. Dragon Ball. Uh, the, the fight, when you finally beat the, the final boss, which I loved. And, and I gotta admit, the, the end, end, it does steer me up a bit. It did tear me up a bit. There you go. Uh, if you remember what happened. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. But yeah, Video good games game. are cool, 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 man. Video they're games cool, are cool. And they're weird. Kirby is a cool guy. Yeah. Kirby is a cool guy. Yeah. That, should, yeah, that's just, that should be the name of our podcast this week. Kirby <laughs> is a cool guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just change the, change the name to that. Right, exactly. Uh, Cool. Well, let's take a quick break for some housekeeping. uh, And then when we get back, we will get into the news of the week. We put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make. And yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots. And we'd love it if you check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in the whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at the whatnots, patreon.com slash the whatnots is the best place to do that. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and a thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash the whatnots. And we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you'd like to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. And we are back. A big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Uh, thank you a ton. It means a lot that you guys are supporting us. We appreciate it. Uh, some cool things that we are up to here at the Whatnots. Uh, this week is a little bit different uh, for us. Well, I, I guess not for us here on C- Crossplay. Uh, but uh, this week on the Whatnots is number 200 of the Whatnots Captain's Log. And to celebrate Melissa, who is the Co- co-host on that one is driving down to come visit me in person live i've n- never met her in real life uh so i could have been catfished this entire time who knows <laughs> um but uh yeah she will be coming d- 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 down to visit we will be live streaming the podcast uh sometime this weekend on sunday uh so that we can be here in my studio in person having a blast uh i think it, it'll be a lot of fun uh i'll get to spend the entire weekend showing her around town all that stuff it'll be good. Your gundams. right that I, I was like i'm so excited you can see all my street shark action figures my gundams my comics all that stuff it'll be great <laughs> um so yeah be on the lookout for that but of course as a result uh she'll be here in town this weekend uh, for the review show. Uh, so the review show will also be live in person uh, this week. And since With she a live is, studio audience. Right, exactly. 
uh, the live studio being all of my Gundams and Jesus <laughs> in a Pokeball who's right back there. Um, but uh, yeah, she pitched a series of road trip m- m- movies uh, and I picked out one that I've we, it has come up on the show multiple times that I know nothing about them. So that's why we picked this one this week on the review show. We're watching the Muppets movie. Uh, which I'm sure I saw at one point, but I know nothing about the Muppets I, except like there's the there's Kermit, there's that yeah, I was one sure. guy nailed it right, nailed yep. it, nailed it. Cool. Muppet okay. movies, I, the, you mean the quote unquote new one? It's it's been quite a quite a while, but like twenty ten somewhere. I I think this is just the original the Muppet movie. Ah, like, okay. It's not the one with uh, Jason Siegel. I have to be honest. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> How did, what movie are you gonna watch? <laughs> the Muppet movie. The there Muppet are more movie. Than... <laughs> <laughs> the one that is j- j- just the Muppet movie. I have no idea. I think that the one that I'm talking about confirm. is the Muppet movie. It, it the one might when, be, they, when they get when they get the show back together. It it might be uh, again. I I don't know anything about this. Uh, I think that that had is some road trip uh, road trip aspect. Then it might be that, that one. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, if it, <laughs> if it is that one, I I enjoyed that movie. Cool. Yeah. I I I didn't. I know people really like the Muppets, and that they have some surprisingly good movies, uh, and stuff like that. So. That's what we will be up to on the review show this week. Uh, on the reactor core, I put up some reactions and reviews to Paper Girls, uh, the new show on Prime Video based on a comic book of the same name. It's a personal favorite comic of mine by one of my favorite creators. Um, the artwork is phenomenal as well. Cliff Chang does the artwork and Brian K. Vaughn writes the comic. Uh, however, this is a live action adaption of the show. Uh, season one is out in its entirety on Prime. I did a reaction to the first episode. I did a review of the first half of the show. And then I did a review of the show in its entirety. Uh, so go ch- go check all of that stuff out uh, on the Reactor Core that's up on our YouTube page as well. Uh, but yeah, that is all the housekeeping that I got for you this week. Uh, so let's get into the news. All right, here we go. Uh, we got some PlayStation news this week. There was a big system update. Uh, as well as the announcement of a backbone controller for uh, iPhones that is specifically PlayStation designed. Uh, so we'll start here with the the system update. Um, there's a lot on the PlayStation blog. I will pull it up here. But ultimately, uh, what they are bringing in this update, uh, which is, right now, I guess, is in beta. Uh, but they have 1440p support, game lists, and more. Yeah, it is um, worth, method- worth mentioning that it, it is beta because I believe that sometimes they end up adding more things to the actual update. Probably, or tweaking it just a bit Yeah, here. Um, so yeah, they, they have the 1440p HDMI video output, so this is good for people who are streaming and have their consoles hooked up to a monitor. Yeah, uh, that's that's where it would like come that. up. I don't think yeah. that there are any 1440p TVs, but for example, again, back to my ultra-wide monitor, it is 1440p, so... Gotcha, yeah. It, a, lot of, a lot of monitors are 1440 um, I'm still stuck in the like mid 2000s with my 1080p monitors, uh, but it's all I need. So it yeah. works out well. Uh, game lists. This is more of an organizational uh, thing here. You can 
basically group your g games uh, with with up to let's see, like you you can have up to fifteen game lists and up to a hundred games per game list uh, is what it says right yeah, here. It is kind of like for PS4 we had the folders, right? But yes. they're calling them game lists, and they have there's a mutation which I do not remember the folders in the PS4 having. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's what uh what that guy is right there. Uh, cause there's like some 3D audio stuff in here. There's access to in progress activities uh, for all you trophy hunters. Um, there's some new social features, including a request share screen. Um, if if you see that, hey, Ignacio is playing Digimon Survive, and you want to watch him. Uh, play the game you can requ request uh to watch him play if you're in the same party i believe so yeah uh, uh, uh you can now you can now request yeah, you party members to, st to start share screen to watch their game yeah you, you would have to be in a party but yeah yeah you can add people it, it is kind of like an, an extra step yeah uh joinable game notifications uh, view new for friends profiles, send stickers and voice messages in game base, uh, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that is the, the, the update for PlayStation yep. five. D do you have much to say on this one? Ignacio? No, much to also add here? No? one thing to add RIP accolades. We got yes. the news this yeah, week. That, that they, they, they also are taking that out. No more yep. accolades um cool well that does that little bit uh but they also announced this uh controller the 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 backbone one i believe is what they are calling it uh you guys might be familiar with the backbone as a mobile uh like phone uh, like iphone yeah, controller. It is a, so it is a controller for your iphone or android mm -hmm. uh depending on the version that you get and it is just Snapping it in on onto the onto the the phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they announced this week that they have one specifically designed to look and fit in uh, with the aesthetics of the PlayStation Five. Yep. Um, introducing Backbone One PlayStation Edition, an officially licensed controller for PlayStation. Um, there's some some info here from the CEO of Backbone on the PlayStation blog. Uh, it's mostly just a press release to announce it. Like, hey, it's neat. It fits in with the design. You can do the remote play app. It works fantastically. Uh, so if you guys are interested in that, check it out. I think this looks neat. I still don't have yep. a like a phone controller uh yet but uh i've heard I good things about the back racer so yeah and i've I heard good have things about that one too yeah so this is a, a neat collaboration it it doesn't add anything new but if you've seen it it is kind of trying it, it is taking the backbone and trying to mimic this aesthetic of the dual sense where it is wide it has a similar if you know if you've seen a dual sense the the buttons are transparent kind of transparent so mm -hmm, it has yeah. the, those same buttons. Uh, it is a very neat collaboration. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, there you go. That's kind of the PlayStation news uh, for yep. this, this week. Not, not, not very meaty and stuff. You can chew on, but some yeah. meat stuff. It, it's some, some stuff. There is some uh, meat in that bone. Next up, there is a Pokemon Presents uh, which is happening August 3rd. I, I guess that is tomorrow. Um, yep. So if you guys are a Pokemon fan and want some more info on P Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, uh, this will be happening tomorrow at 6 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and of course, we'll be up on YouTube after that since they are live st st streaming it um, then. Ignacio, how excited are you for a new Pokemon game? Uh, I'm neither excited nor I'm cold on it. Uh, okay, just it, indifferent. Yeah, it, it is a game that is coming out that I do not think about that much. But when I think about it, 
it is, it does sound like a, a neat next step in in the Pokemon franchise. It uh, if you didn't know, it is kind of the same Pokemon formula that you know, but it is now more open. It is taking elements of Arceus, making it more open. Have the Pokemon be out in the on the in the wild where you can see them and not like like in the past where you would have to go into tall grass and have a random encounter and see them. It is taking that they have said that you can go fight the gyms in any any order that you want. So that mm -hmm. goes into how uh the openness how they are taking the openness. Also I think that it's supposed to be one seamless world where you, you go just into the towns, into and out of them. Yeah. Um so I'm curious to see how they actually pull it out, pull it off. The Pokemon Company and Nintendo in general, I know that they are separate but together. They have this thing where they they move at their own pace, they progress in their own way, where sure, all the things that I've told you, they haven't been any any new it hasn't been any new uh, in the in the wider gaming space in decades but now pokemon is doing it so I, it is cool to see them progress a little bit yeah um yeah i i know i was a big fan of arceus when it came out earlier this year uh i i know you, you like what kind of your thoughts on the game was yeah i i would love to go do some of this stuff in any order uh, that I want, and they're implementing that into this, which I think is fantastic. Uh, I'm just curious to see how this will run on the Switch, because Arceus still had to have those lo those loading screens, uh, which yeah. weren't too bad, but it was still there. Uh, yeah, Arceus graphics. was open, but not not that not open. Great. It was open area, not open world. Yeah, uh, yeah. I it I'm I'm fine with the art style, but even then they had a bunch of draw distance issues and pop in and and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's uh, the so. switch. Even Kirby sure. had the the problems sure. where if if an enemy was uh further than a certain distance, the frame rate was clearly lower than yeah. than the rest of the game. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll we'll see how it plays. All that stuff. I'm yeah. kind of expecting it to just still be, you know, hey, standard Pokemon game yeah. with some neat new stuff. So, yep, cool things there. Uh, well, let's move on to our last big news story. Uh, supposedly, there has been a cultural shift at Rockstar, the developers of Grand Theft Auto. Speaking of which. Uh, GTA 6 had uh, some details leak this past week here. Uh, there was a big uh, expose that Jason Sch Schreier did at Bloomberg uh, this past week, which he detailed that cultural shift, which is interesting because he's usually the one documenting all the stuff of like, here's why it's bad. Here's the, here's the bro culture. Here's the crunch culture. Uh, and here he had a report of uh, here are all the good ways in which it seems to be changing. Um, so that's neat. There, there seems to be the, a, a big paradigm shift there at Rockstar. Do you, do you have th thoughts on that bit before we go into the GTA 6 stuff? Do we know in what ways it's changing uh, the culture in the city? Um, let me let me see if this had any. Uh, what you have here, it only says stuff. that it, it, it is changing. It doesn't take mostly out. focuses, yeah, on the GTA Six stuff. From what I understand, I think with uh, like one of the housers being gone, uh, there's less crunch. There's more freedom to, uh, like just I explore themes that they want to explore. It's not so. It 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 just seems like people are more involved in the process if that makes sense, but don't quote yeah. me on that. Uh, that's just from what I've been he hearing uh, and stuff like that. I, I, I think, well, so let, let's get into these leaks because I think that's kind of part of it. 
um, is is we're seeing that shift in these leaks here. Um, so let's see. Uh, Austin G -G 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 Goslin at Polygon writes, uh, new details on Grand Theft Auto 6 have seemingly been revealed by Bloomberg in a new report on Rockstar on developer Rockstar G Games. The report is about the changing culture at the company and how it may impact the development of the studio's upcoming project, which happens to be the next Grand Theft Auto game. Tellingly, one of the game's main protagonists will reportedly be a woman, a first for the series. According to Bloomberg, she will be a Latina who will star alongside someone else in a story influenced by Bonnie and Clyde. GTA 6 will be set in a fictionalized version of Miami and the surrounding areas. While original plans for the game world covered many locations throughout North and South America were scrapped, the world remains extremely large and includes more indoor locations than than any previous GTA game, according to Bloomberg. So yeah, I I think it just seems to be like, hey, first woman protagonist, maybe changing scope on the size of the game or what they want to do with it or the story they want to tell. Um, who knows? But uh, thoughts on GTA 6 here. I'm, of course, as, as everyone, I'm very excited to see what the next Grand Theft Auto game is. They, it has been now nine, it's going to be nine years since the, since five originally came, originally came out. Since then, we've had all of the PS4 era now until the PS5 era. So I'm intrigued to see what they can do with all these power, these new machines that they have at their disposal. Uh... Going back into the how the uh, the culture at Rockstar has changed, I heard in another podcast that apparently Rockstar is trying to tone down a bit on the how they make fun of minorities and, and certain groups, mm -hmm. and so I think that that is more into the the cultural shift that is happening at Rockstar. Yeah, my idea of how a rockstar game should be is more like the south park philosophy where you should just go after everyone without a, without exceptions everyone and make fun of everyone uh um, gotcha. and so my my fear is that of course i do not want them to just do dumb phrases homophobic whatever jokes just to do them i want them to do them with with a reason but my fear is that they are gonna be trying to tone it down we will have to see Tony down, I mean, as in try not to take any risks as to not offend anyone. I, I think that you should try to go after everyone, not try to not go against no one. Yeah, I, I, I think they're, they're really trying to make sure that they're not punching down at yeah. someone. And it is, yeah, like it, there's, there's, there's a way to do it and make fun of people of all sorts of identities cultural background sexual identities there's a way to do that which you can you can still make jokes about all that stuff you just have to be careful yeah uh you're being uh, sensitive that's my fear. or not being that, racist that's my fear rocks are not like trying to even try to be careful uh, yeah. of course this is unfunded we haven't seen anything of the game so we have to wait and see i think that with miami you of course Having at least one Latino character makes sense because that place sure. is mostly Latino <laughs> than anything yep. else. Uh, it, it felt pretty much right uh, last uh, two weeks that I was there. It was pretty much a survive war where in another Latin America country, the, the amount of Latinos that are there. So it does make sense to have at least one character be Latino. Yeah. Uh, it being uh, a woman now. It is interesting. I, I want to see how they tackle that. Uh, again, going going back into whether or not they will try to tone down things, will they try to tone down the amount of violence she is involved in, considering there are people that have 
problems against violence against women in any way. I do wonder how they, they go after that, considering how violent mm. GG games are. But again, we have to wait and see. But yeah. man, I, I just cannot wait to see what they do. And another thing that I've heard from the game is that they will get very frequent updates. They will add in new locations to the game. Someone compared it to Rockstar or GTA getting the Fortnite treatment. And that's what has me or really happy for it. Just the, the Grand Theft Auto online treatment where they're just constantly adding new things, new up updates, yeah. stuff like I, that. That but seems what to has be me their, more excited, their template now. What has me more excited is that I think that they will go even further than that where mm -hmm. uh, GTA 5 only got one new location, which was for one new mission, and that would be it. And so my hope, and with what rumors have been, is that they will add in new locations, new places to go to. Yeah. I, I hope that they, again, GTA 5 online is an idea that started eight years ago, nine years ago, and they have been going with that. They've been adding to this old idea of making an online game, and I'm excited how how they can now with everything that's gone the that the industry has gone through with Fortnite being a thing now with the new technology what they can do with with the, them starting anew but now yeah i'm excited i've i've not played a grand theft auto game which seems ridiculous right? in this day and age no you're, you're joking never right? got into one yeah no mm -mm. Never played it, so I think this will be my first How? one. How? How? Exactly. Oh, does anyone it's not play? Number anyone, one, most even gamers. game of all time. Like, even... Always up there. How am I the one that has not bought it yet? Cal, not even people that play game games. Anyone? Throw I just a rock was never interested. At, at people in, in the in a mall, whatever public place you want. Throw yeah. a rock. Chances are that person has played GTA Five. <laughs> Chances are, How yeah. have you not played it? The game, Kyle, even now, you, you can go play it now, eight years, nine years later, you will have a great time with the game. I'm sure I will. I, I don't doubt that. I've just never you been should try interested it, try it out. in the game. <laughs> oh my God, so. Kyle. It is one of the best. <laughs> it, is, it is one of the best selling games for a reason. It is that good. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, that is about all the, the, the big news that we got for you this week. Uh, so I'm going to take us into the new and notable. All right. Uh, do you want me to t tackle this one or do you want to do, do this it one? if you want? Cool. You can take Go a break. Uh, the first news story that we have here, the Mario Kart Booster Pack Wave 2 has been announced. It has been shown off and it will be available on August 4th. It will be available on Nintendo Switch Online plus its pension pack members at no additional cost or on its own as a paid DLC. There you go. I uh, think there's I one do... track in there that is brand new from what oh. I under oh. understand. I didn't know that. M m m m most of them are, yeah, like here's yeah, ones from they, the, 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 the whole yes, idea. There's with, one no, that's new. The whole idea with the booster pack is that they are bringing back old levels into yeah. Mario Kart 8. Yep, and I I looked at some of those and they look great for the game. I didn't know that they were actually making a new one. Yeah, so we'll see. Okay, Two Point Campus from the people that brought you Two Point Hospital is coming August 9th for PS5, Xbox Series, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and the PC. It will also be available on Game Pass Day One, I think. There you go. Uh, you can quote me on that, but I'm not that sure. Cult of the Lambs, releasing for PS5, Xbox Series, PS4, Switch, and PC on August 11th. And that same day, Rumbleverse will also be coming out on the same platforms, PS5, Xbox Series, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Marvel's Spider-Man. One of the best games from the last few years will be coming mm -hmm. to PC on August 12th. This yeah. will be the PS5 game, the PS5 version of the game coming to PC with new added features like ultra wide support. 
which are you, I are you, are you sure re- will try it out replaying at some point. it? I yeah. will try it out at some point. Kyle, I'm telling you. Ultra wide, open world, it's great. <laughs> Man, I wish I had a super ultra wide uh, monitor. But those are <sighs> so expensive. Uh, speaking of dorks, Warhammer 40k Dark Tide has been delayed to November 30th for PC, Xbox Series S and X, and it will launch. So, oh, it, so to to clarify, it has been uh, delayed yeah, to November there was a 30th there. for PC. Yeah, uh, there and was then a the, there. the Xbox One will launch shortly after. Yeah, so it has been delayed for November 30th for PC, and it will launch shortly thereafter on the Xbox Series. And the final news story: We are a we are all fk is launching august 18th that's an interesting one i i don't know how into that game i am don't know it if i'm like gonna play game. it but uh, yeah like i'm i'm intrigued like i'm keeping an eye on that game it looks like a but i don't know so well, that's it that's all the new and notable uh and as alan would say they are now old and noted unfortunately alan is why? not here he got why do we have to by a giant that? monster um we fed him to rodan yeah so there you go uh all right lightning round here we go <sighs> some weird news stories <laughs> that i wasn't aware of <laughs> the seems four accidentally adds incest Whoops. Yeah, whoops. Uh, so this uh, uh, supposedly had something to do with their system of wants and like goals or something like that. I- I'm not sure. I-, 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 I don't really play The Sims 4 all that much. I haven't pl- played it in forever. Uh, so uh, y- yeah, somehow, some way, their new system of wants enabled family members to like want to start a relationship <laughs> with each other and you, you, you could act on th- 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 that and it was really interesting because i guess you could uh make like super deformed babies and all that stuff and their faces were all messed up uh so who knows but but yeah they uh if they have not fixed that yet they are working hard to patch that out <laughs> dude i know that the seems to have been getting liberal lately but this is a step too far <laughs> Anyways. Uh, next news story the near automata community can't seem to figure out the origins of a secret door have you heard about this one no kinda so yeah uh, Apparently, video surfaced online of uh, this player that that originally had like really poor cell phone quality video of this door in in near Atahamada that no one else can seem to find. It's not in the game. He eventually came back with better quality footage of the game, but yeah, no one knows where to find this door to the church the modding scene has been like well he's not using any like new assets so he like they like this isn't something they modded in unless this is just like a brilliant modder uh that we don't know anything about uh the devs haven't really spoken up about this at least as far as i know of um who who knows what this is could this be dlc who knows could this potentially be something that uh what's his name yoko Tohoharo, right he's the one that made this that uh the developers put in some like one in like two million chance that a, like, a player will see this and this is just the first time someone has found this thing but i feel like that would have been data mined in there especially now that this is popping up like i don't know but it's a mystery (laughs) yeah so there you go it is a mystery indeed 
Next up, we have the Annapurna Interactive held a games showcase this past week, which included more of 30 Thirsty's Thirsty's tutors, a new project from the creators of Kentucky Route Zero, and a 4K 60 FPS update for Xbox Series X and X and PS5 that is out now. Oh, that was um that was for um Edith Finch. What remains of Edith Finch? Uh, I, I, I think forgot it was to put the whole thing Edith in there. Finch. Yeah. Um, yeah. My mistake on typing that incorrectly. Uh, but, but yeah, 4K 60 frame update uh, for Xbox for the new generation consoles. That's out out now. What remains of Edith Finch? Some sad news. The Koto remake has been put on hold over at 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 aspire yeah i i don't remember if we talked about this last week i, I don't think we did I, I i don't remember exactly when this came out but yeah it seems like something is up there yeah like they, they I released think the trailer with someone they released the trailer and then two of the higher ups on the game got fired like immediately yeah. after and then they announced this d d like indefinite delay uh, that's like, hey, it now at least won't be coming out till like 2025. Uh, so it's, yeah. it seems like there's they're wanting a big change of direction or who knows what. So, yeah, it also doesn't help that Aspire is more of a porting house. And this is supposed to be a remake of the game. Yeah. Um, who knows? So if you were excited, well, it sucks to be you. Thanks, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> sorry. Uh, we got new details for the PSVR 2. Uh, if I can remember them from the top of my head, we saw uh, the pass through feature for, for the console. If you played with an Oculus Quest, you know the, the feature of how you can see, even with, with the visor on, you can still see outside. They showcase off the, that feature for, uh, for the PSVR 2. Yeah, and there wasn't much other than that that they showed. It, it wasn't. A few they didn't show things, a lot. But yeah, yeah. A again, that's what I remember from from my top of my head. It's not like I if it's not like I could look it up or whatever. Yeah, if only we uh, had some technology like at our fingertips that we could just look up a a Googleplex of information. A Googleplex, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If only <laughs> I could find that Googleplex information. Uh, some disappointing news story. Uh, this week we got the news that uh, Evo is coming back and also that several of the publishers that will be on the show will be showing new stuff for the games. One of which was WB Games. But unfortunately, we got now the news that MK12 will not be at Evo this year interesting does it mean that maybe they are bringing injustice 3 who knows does it mean that it is more multiverse stuff probably <laughs> but uh yeah uh, i wouldn't hold my breath to seeing anything big at evil this year and then the mm -hmm. final news story some unexpected news logitech will be working with tencent on a new cloud gaming handheld and I believe that that's all we know. Weird. So, uh, yeah, Tencent and Logitech getting together to make a new console. I wonder if it's a like a Switch knockoff, like mobile, but has a camera built in, so you can still stream. But it's I don't I, know. I wouldn't compare it to the Switch. I don't know if you've noticed, but with the rise of the Steam Deck, a lot of companies have come out with their competitors to that yep. console. You have the INEOs and the Ainlokis and the Avernix and a lot of many other companies. So I'm sure that this is more of Tencent trying to get in on that, on yeah. that brush. To especially in the Chinese gaming consoles. market. Yeah, yeah especially for, with China. Interesting. Interesting stuff. There and that's go. all we got. 
Yeah. And that's all we got for this week. Good stuff. Video games, man. Um, cool. Well, Ignacio, what are you excited for this week? You playing more Digimon Survive? Are you playing more uh, Genshin Impact? You uh, watching any more Gundam anime? All the all no. stuff. What's, I still what's, gotten, what's happening? I still haven't gotten to watching any Gundam anime. No, I'm excited to finally get out of my house. I've been in yeah. quarantine for a week, and that ends today. Cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to go out. Going out, partying, getting sick again. All that stuff. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, yeah, I'm excited to keep playing more Live Alive. Uh, and the game has been pretty good so far. Excited about that. There's still a few games that I have not played yet uh, that I am interested in. Uh, the As Dusk Falls and Immortality came out last week. I'm interested in playing those. Uh, I just started watching... Uh, the final season of Better Call Saul. Um, so I'm excited for that, excited for the finale. Uh, but yeah, we shall see. We shall see. Good stuff. We Good stuff is happening. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So Ignacio, where can the people find you on the internet? The people can find me on Twitter at Ignacio Rojas B. That's I-G-N-A-C-I-O-R-O-J-A-S-B. There you go. Uh, and then you guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer uh, on Twitter. And if you guys would like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. Uh, I forgot to mention at the housekeeping that we also have a spoiler cast for Nope up. Uh, Jordan Peele's new movie. Uh, so you know what? I might put that one up on the screen over there that, that way. So go like, share, and subscribe, all of that stuff. Uh, yeah, this has been number 127 of Crossplay. We will see you all next time.